Hi, I'm Dan Heckman, and today we're going to talk about immunology, and specifically lymphoid structures. So before we get started, what is lymph? Okay, I always wondered this as a medical student. Yeah, they always talk about lymph nodes and all these things, lymph vessels. What is it? And what's its purpose? What's its function? So generally speaking, here's a shower head, and here's a shower. Okay, this is how we're going to simplify it. Here's you taking a shower. All right, before you take your step one exam. So here's the water running over you, and all the dirt that was on you collects with the water, and then it's drained into the shower drain. All right, and all this dirty water eventually is filtered at a water treatment facility, and then the clean water that was filtered is recycled again. So this essentially is lymph. All right, and the purpose of it is in your body to collect all the fluid that drained out of capillary. So here's a, an arterial, then a, a, a capillary here, and then here's a venule. So when your body releases all the nutrients and oxygen and other things to your tissues, there's fluid that is released as well. And, and if you didn't recycle this back into the arterial system or your vasculature system, you would have a lot of fluid building up in your tissues, right? And you'd kind of look like a snowman. So that's the point of it, all right? But not only does it recycle fluid, so that's the first thing it does, it also filters the fluid. Just like we had that water treatment facility, well, you can think of lymph nodes as water treatment facilities, little mini ones. And the third thing it does, those water treatment facilities or the lymph nodes, they filter all that fluid they sometimes pick up some foreign pathogens that are harmful to your body. And that may be in your blood system or in your tissues. And if they determine that these foreign particles or foreign bacteria or viruses or whatever may be filtered, if they determine those to be harmful to your body, then they can mount an immune response. So that is the point of the lymphatic system and the immune system in general. All right, and that is what lymph is. Lymph is just all the murky junk that is collected from the capillaries and is in the process of being recycled back into the vasculature. All right. Okay, so now let's follow the flow of lymph through one of these checkpoints. All right, one of these lymph nodes. And here it's arriving, okay? It comes into contact first with this outer capsule. And what is the first cell that it comes into contact with in the cortex? It's the B cells, okay? And what do B cells do? We'll talk about them a little bit more extensively later, but they make antibodies, okay? Once they're stimulated, these follicles of B cells develop a pale center that indicates that the B cells are stimulated and they are proliferating and growing in number so that they can generate antibodies to go and attack whatever antigen that stimulated them. Okay, now let's go a little bit deeper into the next layer, which is called the paracortex. What cells do we find here? The T cells, okay? And what do T cells do? Well, they're involved in propagating the immune response primarily. There's two types. One type, the CD8 cells will eat. You can think of them, they ate cells, CD8, because they predominantly stimulate cell destruction in virally or tumor cells. But the CD4 type, what do they do? They release cytokines that help propagate and just basically cheer on the immune response. Okay, so let's go a little bit deeper into the medulla, or the middle of the lymph node. What cells do we find there? Macrophages. What do they do? Their name kind of implies what they do. Macrophage, big eaters, okay? So they're the ones that phagocytose and determine if something is foreign. They will go and present it to the B and the T cells and cause them to make antibodies if they're a B cell and then the T cells will release more cytokines that favor the immune response development and strengthening against that particular foreign antigen. All right, the final cell that's involved that we'll talk about with lymph nodes is a cell that almost has roots, and the Greek word for roots is what? 
It's dendrites. So this is a dendritic cell. Almost looks like a starfish. And we see it where there's contact with the outside environment, so such as on the surface of the skin. If a bacterium or, or virus makes its way in here, this little guy will phagocytose it and carry it to the nearest lymph node and say, hey guys, I found this. It might be harmful. It's definitely foreign. You should start making some antibodies and start proliferating and growing in number so that we can attack it and make sure that it does not harm the body. Okay? And then lymph exits via efferent vessels. So efferent, as you know, you can think of exits, starts with an E. Afferent is arrives, starts with an A, arriving. Okay? So that's the flow of lymph through lymph node checkpoints. Okay, so now let's talk about how lymph flows and drains when thinking about the entire body. So in general, you just have to remember what artery supplies the tissues that the lymph is draining from. For example, lymph that's drained from the liver. Well, what artery supplies the liver? Yep, the celiac artery, right? The celiac trunk. And so the lymph will thus drain to the celiac lymph node chains, okay? So that's a pretty easy thing to remember. And then another thing you should know is that the right arm and the right side of half of the head will drain to the right lymphatic duct, okay? The left side of the head and the entire left arm, torso, and both the legs will ultimately drain to, do you know? The thoracic duct. Both will dump back into the subclavian vasculatures on both sides of the body, respectively. So you can look up more details in your first aid text, but this is just a general rule of thumb that you should know for lymph drainage. Okay, so just as fluid is filtered in the form of lymph in the lymph nodes, as we just talked about, blood is also filtered, and this takes place in the spleen. Now, the spleen is in the top left corner of your abdomen, and the spleen is made up of a bunch of what they're called sinusoids, okay? And they're just that just means they're little sinuses, little pockets uh, where the filtering takes place. Now, the spleen has a capsule, a fibrous capsule, just as the lymph nodes had. But these sinusoids, they have blood enter, first of all, via arteries and, and arterioles, and the blood is filtered and leaves via venules and ultimately coalesce together into veins, flows out of the spleen. Now, there are two types of pulp. When you think of orange juice, uh, it's kind of a substance that takes up the orange juice. So there's white pulp in the spleen, and then there's red pulp, okay? This gelatinous substance. So the white pulp actually houses B cells predominantly, all right? Follicles of B cells, and that's why it looks white. It's because when these things are stimulated, these follicles get pale centers, if you recall. The outside is dark but the inside is pale because these B-cells are rapidly proliferating, okay? And the B-cells generate antibodies, and predominantly IgM. That's the main antibody of the spleen. You'll see why that's important in just a little bit, all right? And then surrounding the white pulp, and it's called the periarterial lymphatic sheath. And what cell is predominant there are T-cells. We will talk more about what T-cells do, but in general, they cheer on the immune response. Okay, so we talked about white pulp. Then on the outside is red pulp. And red pulp houses predominantly macrophages. And this is where most of the mechanical filtering takes place. All right? The purpose of the spleen, then, is to filter out, obviously, pathogens, just like in lymph nodes, just as they do that. But also, old and dying red blood cells, they're filtered out, too as well as small little fragments that may be within cells. Little cellular inclusions are filtered out. So you'll see what happens when you don't have a spleen. Those cellular inclusions will still be there. All right, so what's the purpose of generating so much IgM? Well, IgM is actually very effective at combating encapsulated bacteria. Do you remember what some of those encapsulated bacteria are from your micro section? Well, we can use the mnemonic shine skis. So they are strep pneumonia, haemophila influenza type B, Neisseria meningitis, E. coli, salmonella, Klebsiella pneumoniae, and 
strep agalactiae. So those are some of the most famous encapsulated bacteria that you should know for your exam. So what happens? Let's say a young athlete has infectious mononucleosis and he goes out for football tryouts and gets hit in the left side and ruptures his spleen because he didn't listen to his doctor. And he loses all function of his spleen. So when that happens, he no longer will generate as much IgM and he won't be able to combat encapsulated bacteria quite as well. And he runs the risk of septic shock or having a systemic infection with one of those bacteria we just mentioned. Okay, here's an example. What is this called? When someone does not have a functional spleen or they have an absent spleen, either due to trauma or someone with sickle cell disease, what are these inclusions called in the red blood cells? How will jolly bodies? That's important to know for your test. Because you, when you do a peripheral blood smear, you'll see evidence that their spleen is not working and the macrophages within the red pulp are not pulling out these little cellular inclusions like they normally should. The final organ that's important when discussing the immune system is the thymus. And an easy way to remember what the significance of the thymus is, is it begins with a T. And it is the site where T cells mature and develop. So here's where it is, and it's really most functional in the early years of life. And if you can remember that the T cells, the immature T cells, they migrate from the bone marrow actually to the cortex of the thymus and sort of travel inward toward the medulla so that the most mature types of T cells are in the medulla. That's a good mnemonic to remember. All right. And here's kind of a fun question for you. We'll talk more about T cell maturation and differentiation in a few slides later, but let me throw a, a curveball at you. Where is the thymus derived from in terms of embryology? So it's actually the third pharyngeal pouch, which, believe it or not, is sometimes asked on step one. All right. Here is an example. Can you tell me what this is? This is actually Hassel corpuscles. What's the significance of these? And what are they? They're basically just world calcifications, which don't serve any unique function other than if you see them, that means that you're looking at a section of thymus. And sometimes that is asked on step one. Now it's time for a flash quiz. You should be able to tell me this. What types of bacteria are targeted by the spleen? So remember, the spleen makes a lot of IgM, and IgM activates complement to destroy the outer shell or the capsule of the following bacteria. Using the mnemonic, Shineskys, all right? And here they are again. <laughs> 